it's like a sandy beach with um, lots of really, really, really beautiful clear water. Mm -hmm. You can see the blue. You can see the just the clearness of it, looking deep, deep, deep into the depths of it. How deep is this water? Looks to be, could be very deep, like 16 feet, mm -hmm. 20 feet. And as you look at this water, where are you seeing it from? Where's the observer? I feel like I'm floating above the water. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself now to continue to float. And tell me what you see as you float above the water. I see myself and I look like a Tinkerbell. Ah, beautiful. With the magic wand in my hand. So let's find out where this Tinkerbell goes. Describe your adventure for me. Well, I feel like it's my job to just spread the magic and enjoy and appreciate the beauty of the Blue Lagoon. So I just move from one space to another using my magic wand, sparkling, making it clean, mm. seeing it as beautiful, 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 beautiful. What else do you do with this magic wand? What else do you work with? Just the water or somewhere else? Oh, I feel like I'm in the clouds as well. Mm -hmm. I think I live up there in the clouds. Let's find out where it is that you live. I feel like I live up there in the billowy, beautiful clouds. Mm -hmm. I can see myself resting up there, taking a break, looking down at the water, loving every moment, mm -hmm. whether I'm up there in the clouds, relaxing or reclining, or actually over the water with my magic wand, mm -hmm. going from place to place. Beautiful. So when you're in the clouds, how big do you feel? Do you feel like you're small or large? I feel pretty good size compared mm -hmm. to the size of the clouds. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where you go to next. I'd like for you now to travel to a place that was significant to you. Be in a significant place and see what happens. I'm in a mountainous area mm -hmm. with um, snow covered, covering the top. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm a farmer or a, somebody like a Mexican person or something mm -hmm. climbing up the hill uh, with work to do. And it's hard physical work. I'm carrying something on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I'm with a group of others as we make this transverse event of going up the mountain. Let's find out what the event is. It's a celebration. Mm -hmm. I come upon a lot, of, a lot of other villagers and we're here before a big fire. And then the dancing starts and we put down our work and we're just part of the experience of the moment. Mm -hmm. Enjoying the music, enjoying each other, enjoying the dancing, eating and drinking, and letting the cares of our lives go by the side of the road, mm -hmm. knowing that we can pick it up at any time. But for now, we're in the moment of pure joy. Wonderful. What is the celebration about? It feels like there's a new, new member of our community, that there's a new baby that's been being presented and we always celebrate the birth of a baby because it means new life and new adventures mm -hmm. and new gifts to give to the community and to the world. Yes. And as you look at this scene, I'd like you to feel what year this is. What year do you feel this is? It feels like the 1770s or mm -hmm. so. And what country are you in? What part of the world? It feels like I'm in Chile. Mm -hmm. Very good. And how old are you there? I feel like I'm a man, probably in my 40s or 50s, mm -hmm. probably 40s. What name do you go by? 
Chico. Chico. Mm-hmm. Is that your nickname? Yeah. Yes. So, Chico, let's find out a little bit about you. Let's find out a little bit more about your life. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go to another time and another place. Be there now. I'm back at where I live, which is kind of like a hut Mm -hmm. built out of sticks and mud. Mm -hmm. And my home is like on the mountainside, so it's kind of built into a hill. Yes. And I have a fire within my building too, you know, within my area so I can cook Mm -hmm. when I'm there. And I have a wife and three little babies, really close together. Wonderful. I'd like for you to look at your wife's eyes. There, your eyes are always the window to your soul. And I'd like for you to look at her eyes and see if you recognize her soul and someone that you know in this lifetime. What comes to me is one of my aunts from this li- lifetime. Mm-hmm. Her name was Billy. Mm-hmm. And she never had children, but she always appreciated me and my brother and sister. Yes. So take a look at your children now and see if you recognize them. Do they seem familiar? Not particularly. I can't really identify them as anybody that I know now. Okay, very good. So what's important about this scene? How do you feel here with your children and your wife? I feel complete. I feel like I have a happy life. It's a simple life, but I have time to have joy. Mm -hmm. I work hard. I have family. What more could I ask for? Mm -hmm. Good. So Chico, let's close that scene and let's go now to when you're older to another significant event in that lifetime. We'll be there now. Where are you? I'm at another, I don't know if it would be a bonfire, I guess maybe it would be a, another event, a, mm-hmm. a special ceremony where there was a passing of some of the villagers. What happened to them? I think they were attacked for what they, what they had, what they were carrying as they were making their trip up or down the mountain. Mm-hmm. And we celebrated their lives. Wonderful. How do you feel about death in your village? We just feel it's God's way. It's it's part of life that whatever happens, happens, whether it's the birth of a child or the passing of one of our villagers. Mm-hmm. You seem to celebrate it equally. We do. We know that we come in from source if we leave, going back to source. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So let's close that scene now and let's go now to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Be there now. I was fortunate to have a long life. I feel like my face is covered with wrinkles and sun damage. My hands look old. But I feel complete because the generations that followed me are all on their way to being good villagers, continuing the traditions Mm -hmm. that I was brought up with. Loving, living life, working hard, enjoying family. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So now, Chico, I want you to transition out of that body, taking your last breath there, and allow your soul to leave that body. And tell me what happens as your body remains and your soul leaves. What happens next? Well, it feels like kind of like a like a tunnel, like a tornado kind of a thing, maybe in reverse. Yes. Where I feel like the My soul is being lifted up somewhere into the sky. Mm -hmm. What happened? Where do you go? Not sure, kind of just like the great beyond. Mm -hmm. So let's continue and follow it. Follow this journey of your soul and tell me where it goes to.
It feels like it goes to a really high mountain top, mm -hmm. so high that the clouds touch the mountain. What do you do on this mountain top? I'm greeted by others that I know from my time there. What do they tell you? You are so loved. You are so welcome. We appreciate you. We welcome you. All is well. Mm -hmm. And what do these souls look like on this mountaintop? Well, when I first got there, they were kind of familiar looking in that they had the same, you know, basic attire. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like they kind of shifted into just beings of light. I recognize them through their eyes, mm -hmm. but they're more like bubbles. Do these bubbles have any colors to them? Actually, I see rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. Does each one have a different color, or are they all rainbows? I think they're all kind of rainbows. Mm -hmm. And now look at yourself. What kind of body do you have? Well, I feel like I aspire to be a rainbow. It feels like there'd be freedom in the rainbow. And I know that I've left my body behind, so I don't need this body. This It's not even here, really. It was just an illusion that my body was up there with me. But it's not. So what do you look like now? I'm a yellow rainbow. A yellow rainbow. Beautiful. So let's see what happens after this. Where do you go to next? I feel like I'm in another part of the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like a Swiss girl. A Swiss girl? Yeah. How old are you there? Oh, about six or eight. And I have a lot of joy in this lifetime. Cows on the hillside, a family that loves me, time to play. I have a brother. Mm -hmm. We both like to play on the mountain together. What do they call you there? Heidi. Heidi. Mm -hmm. So Heidi, let's find out where it is that you live. I'd like for you now to go to the place where you live. It's close to the hills and the mountains. Mm -hmm. And it's quite small, but it looks to be made of wood. And we all have like a kitchen area. But well, the rest of it is kind of like blankets on the floor mm -hmm. that make up the beds where we sleep. And then when we're not sleeping, we push them to the side so we can do whatever we want mm -hmm. to have fun in the house. Or, of course, our favorite place up on the hillside and into the mountains. Mm -hmm. So, who is in the house with you? I have that mom and that dad. Oh, dad's busy usually. My mom's cooking, making cheese. making sure that we're provided for, that we're happy. There's lots of music there. Who plays the music? My dad, he plays an accordion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes townspeople come to visit us here in the house and they bring their instruments and they bring friends too. So even though our house is small, we make space for lots of fun. So Heidi, let's find out a little bit about what you do. I'd like for you to close that scene and see yourself doing what you enjoy to do, doing most. Oh, picking flowers, just being in nature. I have a dog. I really like my dog. What's your dog's name? Poof. Poof. Mm -hmm. Do you play by yourself with Poof, or are there others with you? Well, uh, my brother. I think actually he's a twin. Mm -hmm. Feels like he is. What's his name? I think his, his name is Ian. Ian. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. So Heidi, let's now close that scene, and now let's go to a significant scene in your lifetime when something very important is happening. Be there now.
It's my wedding day. Tell me about this wedding day. I've grown up to be a beautiful young woman. We had the ceremony in a beautiful meadow, not too far from the house. The townspeople are a part of this too. Those that we played the music with and had fun with all of those years of my growing up time. And even my dog, Poof, is there. How did the others participate in your wedding? I have a younger sister by now. She's quite, quite a lot younger. And she's like my flower girl. And since I love flowers, she does a wonderful job of sharing the flowers as she walks down the path to the front where I'm getting married. And what about your future husband? How do you feel about him? Oh, I love him. I can hardly wait till we are together all the time. Mm -hmm. What is his name? Nedgar. Nedgar. Take a look at Nedgar's eyes. Do you recognize the soul? I think he might be my dad. Mm -hmm. So let's find out about your life with Nedgar. Close that scene and see yourself now in a very important moment with Nedgar. I see us building our own house, putting the lumber together. I've grown very strong over the years, so I can help help the men as they work on it. And Edgar's parents are around, so they also help. We live a ways from where I grew up, and I don't get to see my family quite as much as I'd like. But I know that Edgar and I are very happy and that we're building our own home now. Mm -hmm. How old are you there, Heidi? I think I'm in my mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And where is it that you're living? What country is this? I think I'm still in Switzerland. It's just a ways away from family. Okay. And what year is this? I think this is something like the late 1880s. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's find out what happens next. Advance the scene to another time when you something significant was happening. We're at the school, or maybe it's a town meeting of some sort, and it's up to people who have courage to speak up for what they believe in. And even though I'm a woman, I have strong feelings about how our children are being treated in the community. What's going on with the children? How are they being, being treated? I don't think they're given enough opportunity to learn the skills that they'll need. Mm -hmm. They're learning book stuff, but they're not really learning as much about life and the the outdoors is I had the opportunity to learn about. And so I feel that the education should be more balanced and the parents should be more involved. A lot of parents are off doing their own thing, working hard, of course, but it doesn't feel like they're quite as connected to family. And since I had such a wonderful family growing up, I want that to be the case for these children as well. So what do you do about it? speak the, my, my mind at the meeting, the big town hall meeting, mm -hmm. and I feel that I'm respected. So people listen. They take it in, they agree. But it's still a situation where men tend to rule things and make the decisions. But I find that more women are speaking up because we are the caretakers of the children. We know them well. So let's follow up and see what happens with the children and the education system. There's more outdoor time than there was. There's still emphasis on learning through books. 
but there's an equal emphasis on exploring our area where we live. We learn a lot of things by being outside. What do you learn when you're outside? How to take care of plants. Why is that important, Heidi? Because it's our food. It's our joy, too, from just enjoying the beauty where we can connect with the woods, the hillsides, the gnomes, the little fairies that live. Do you see those gnomes? Oh, I do. I always saw them when I was a child as well. And I want the other generations that follow me to still have those connections because it's really special. What did the gnomes teach you? To appreciate where I live. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's close that scene now. And now let's go to another scene in that same lifetime when something significant is happening. This time we're down by the river. A lot of people are gathered. And we're shouting. People are swimming across the river. And it's kind of scary because it's a long ways and there's a lot of current. And I'm a little bit afraid for Nicker because he's one of them that's swimming across. And Why are they swimming across the river? I don't, I don't really know, know why. why. Let's find out what happens. I think it was actually a game, you know, it was just a, a fun afternoon. We were, we were just having some fun and people were kind of daring each other to do it. Mm -hmm. And I see Medgar's not quite making it, but he's kind of floating away. And it's kind of scary because he's my life and I I want to be with him for many, many, many years. But it looks like he's not with me anymore. That it perhaps was his last day. They looked for him, but they couldn't find him. What does that do to you, Heidi? breaks my heart. I had so wanted to spend my whole life with him. I envisioned that when it was time for us to go, we'd go together. But that's not the way it was meant to be, I guess. So let's see what happens to your life now. Close that scene, and let's go to the next significant scene in your lifetime. Much older now, but the family that we raised lives close by to me, and they are so good to me. Are these your children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They look after me. They they bring fresh cheese, butter. How old are you there? Oh, I, I think I'm. In my 70s, mm -hmm. I got to keep on even out without Medgar. Mm -hmm. How do you spend your days now, Heidi? I have a garden. Mm -hmm. I still like to raise plants. I like to see my garden gnomes and my fairies. I like to talk to them. So I'm really not lonely. It's not the way I expected life to go, but I'm surrounded by love and nature. Wonderful. So now, close that scene and let's go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Be there now. The family surrounding me. I'm in my bed. I'm quite sick with like a bad cough or pneumonia or something. They all come to touch me. There's not a whole lot of conversation, but I know that they love me now in this moment, and that whatever happens, happens. I'm at peace. Very good. So take your last breath now, 
transition out of that body and tell me what happens. Where do you go? I go back to the river to look for Nedgar to see if he's there, if he's under the water since I don't have a body. I can look down under the water and see if he's there. But he's not. But as I lift out of the water, it's like he's an angel in the sky. He takes a hold of my hands. I know it's him, but he looks more like an angel than the man that I loved. And he lifts me up to the clouds. He says, this is our new home, honey. It's been a while, but we're here now and we're together. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel so happy. I had waited for that day. I lived my life on the earth, but I looked forward to that time when we could be reunited. What happens after you spend some time with Nedgar? Do you ever meet with your guides while you're there? Yeah. Let's find out what happens when you meet with your guides. Be there now. They tell me that they were always with me, guiding my way through that lifetime. And they appreciated the way that I took the guidance, the way I connected with them, the way I persevered, stood up for what I believed in. And they're happy to have me on this plane now. So what was the purpose of coming into this lifetime now as Barbara? What was the reason for it? What did Barbara want to learn before coming to this life? She wanted to experience more love. More love than Edgar? No, just to add on to all the wonderful love that she had in that previous lifetime. She loved it so much she wanted to do it again. Didn't get enough love. I don't know if she got enough. It felt like she did, but she just wants more. She knows that love is really important, so she wants to be a giver and a receiver. How is she doing in this lifetime? She's doing pretty great. Sometimes she holds herself back. Why is that? I don't know, maybe old programming that you, you give more than you receive. She's gotten better though. She, she knows how to receive. She just allows herself in the moment to actually take in when others are loving her now. Where did that programming come from? The programming that she shouldn't? Mm -hmm. or? Yes. How about the love? I think it's the whole idea that that, that I was programmed that, that you're to give, you're to give, you're to give. And you, if you receive, fine, but your job is as a giver here. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Oh, I think it works both ways, and I've found in over the many years of my life now that as I receive and as I give, it's, a, it's like a big, wonderful circle. As I allow others to give, give to me, it brings me happiness. Mm -hmm. So is she fulfilling her purpose this lifetime around? Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Now she says that she has had dreams where she's a teacher, and when the year ends, she barely has taught anything. What are these dreams? Does she have a lifetime as a teacher? Or is this a metaphor? Well, it's a little both. She has had lifetimes as a teacher, but it's also a metaphor for for life, a feeling that she wants to teach others and that she has a lot to do and to do, do, do. And sometimes she feels like she hasn't done enough. And so that's where I think the dreams come in. She's just, it's just that part of her that feels like she's not good enough. She just she just hasn't done enough. Mm -hmm. And here she is. 
What do you say to her about that? Has she, is she enough? Has she done enough? She's always been enough. Always, always, always. We feel bad when she gets hard on herself because we don't see her that way at all. We know if she compares herself to others that that she feels like she comes up short, but we keep telling her that, that that's not the way it is, that in every moment you have a purpose. And so it's yours to decide to flow in the direction that you choose in the moment. And even if you make mistakes or you're sedentary and not doing what you feel is enough, you're still doing things through your mind, sometimes with your body, and so often with your spirit, sending love energetically to others that you know and those that you don't. Well, she feels that she's wasting her time engaging in things that she doesn't feel are worthwhile. She spends a lot of time on social media, listening to things that scare her. Why is this? Why has she focused on this? Oh, in a way she's sort of catching up for the blessed, sheltered life that she lived mm -hmm. for so many years. She didn't have a clue about any of the rest of that. But now it feels like she's taking it the other direction. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that for her. We, we want it to be a happy medium to know that most of that stuff that, that she connects with when she's in social media isn't even real. And that so much of it won't even come to pass. So there's no reason to be in fear because we're always here anyway. Yes. Yes. So why has it become such an addiction to her? Oh, it's just a diversion, just a kind of a lazy diversion of hers. She could be doing more with her, her art. I mean, she's doing pretty great with that. We're, we're supporting her every step of the way. But I guess sometimes she doesn't want to feel like that she's confident enough to take the next steps in the direction of, of getting her work out in the world in a bigger way because she looks back over her life of the times where she didn't have as much confidence or courage as, as perhaps she felt she needed. Or maybe that old programming about, about not showing off or not bragging or not showing yourself when really we wanted her to do that because that's the only way that others would find out what she has to offer. But she's been a little short on that. Why did she choose <coughs> that that um, restriction on herself of not showing off? Because I know that we all choose different lessons. Why did she pick a mom that told her not to show off? Uh, I think because her mom felt that she was that was part of sheltering her, sheltering her from harm. And so if she didn't show off, others wouldn't discourage her from whatever she was doing because they didn't really know who she was. Yes. And so I think her mom had good intentions. She just went about it a way that, that stuck with Barb that perhaps it didn't need to, but she just carried it on. Mm -hmm. So when she thinks about her talents and successes and she's talking to other people or explaining her work well how would you like her to present it to where she doesn't feel like she's bragging well what she often does these days when she's sharing and is so enthusiastic is she shares the aspect that it all comes from the divine mm -hmm and that she knows as she works that she couldn't do what she does if it weren't for a whole lot of help. Yes. And we're so happy to help her. So many of us angels and masters and art from other generations and other times and previous lives. We're all here to support her and help her. And she knows this and she's so enthusiastic that she just wants to not only share her gifts but share the, the process and, and the fact mm -hmm. that it is all connected. Mm -hmm. So will that help her more, putting it out there that this is divinely guided? 
Yes, because her desire is to connect with people who are also in that train of thought of, of being connected with their, their higher selves and can appreciate when others create from that space because that's where all creation comes from. But when you see art, it's a physical manifestation and others can appreciate and love it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now she wanted a message so that she can change that programming. And I know that she is divinely guided. What message do you want to replace that programming with? Which program exactly? The programming of not bragging. We'd like her to know that it's not really bragging, that everybody is given multiple gifts and talents in every lifetime and it's their job to show, to shine brightly. And so as she shares, it's not bragging, it's shining brightly so that others can be a part of the light. Very good. So her artwork is the light. It's part of the light. Absolutely. Very good. So as Barbara sees herself doing her art, I'd like her for, to remind her of how she's allowing that art to shine throughout the entire world, emitting that energy that she brings to it, and knowing that that artwork will go to those that appreciate her art, her light, her divine guidance. It's working that way. I see the light. I see it around the world. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. She says that she'd like to deepen the connection that she has with her higher self. She wants to keep a close connection with her higher self. Is she doing that now? She is, especially lately. Mm -hmm. And she knows deep within her heart where we connect mm -hmm. that, that all she has to do is ask and in any moment, in every moment, small or big, we're happy to help her. No matter who it is. Anybody. Mm -hmm. So who are the ones that are helping her? who are working through her hands, because obviously she's asking for their assistance. Well, there's Archangel Michael for sure. Mm -hmm. What role does he play in her life? He oversees everything, mm -hmm. makes sure that she's safe, loved. Mm -hmm. And what about the ones that are working through her hands? You know, they're from other dimensions. Mm -hmm other planets that she's been on yes had lifetimes on are these her friends well, they're her friends now but mm. she just calls them in good so can these friends also and especially archangel michael can they work with getting this information out they could they will mm -hmm. And I know that Archangel Gabriel is the messenger. Can I request on her behalf for Archangel Gabriel to also spread the word? Of course. Mm -hmm. He's got his trumpet out. <laughs> He's spreading the word wide and far. Wonderful. So we've got a good manager and a good marketer, trumpeteer. Okay. Now, you told her that her sole purpose was to learn about love here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can she use her soul's purpose on this new transition to the new earth? To not block those feelings. Sometimes she gets overwhelmed by the love 
because there's emotion, there's so much emotion in it. Mm -hmm. But we really would like her to see love in everybody, to really watch people mm -hmm. more deeply, yes. to be connected with everyone around her. No so, matter what? No matter what, because nobody knows what steps others take, what their life has been. So one of her gifts is that she can love very freely. And we want her to continue, especially as the New Earth unfolds, because there may be that fear we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Others that haven't discovered some of the things that she's discovered lately. Mm -hmm. And rather than to tap into that part of being afraid, we want her to love more, to, to be able to hold people in her arms, to allow them to know energetically and physically that everything will be just fine. There's nothing to worry about. It's just a natural process that we're going through here, mm -hmm. Gaia and now, now humanity. Can you tell Barbara a little bit about what the experiences of the New Earth transition are going to be like? It's going to be like we're all we're all still here, mm -hmm. but but some of us will have different experiences. On the new earth part, everything will just look brighter than it does to others. The colors, especially the ones that she appreciates so much since she's a color person, mm -hmm. she's just going to love it when she sees the magnificence through these new eyes that she's going to have. It's going to be so wonderful. Oh, there's going to be so much love. And the others will still be here, the people that she's experienced. She might not come into contact with them because the ones she will come into contact with will have the same energy. Mm -hmm. They will want to be, lift, be living in those spaces and letting go of, of the, the past, of the way things were in the 3D world. And so it's all so wonderful and it's not going to be that far away. All she needs to do is just keep on her path of loving herself, putting out her, her joy into the world through her work, and just through her personal interactions day to day. Well, she was hoping that as the years progress, she's going to have a man to share this life with. Someone that she truly loves completely and vice versa. How can she attract that right man in her life at this time? She doesn't want to settle for someone that's simply compatible. Someone who's just comfortable with. needs to set her sights higher mm. to to know that that person or people men are out there she needs to be more open mm -hmm. she needs to see love in more people in the men that she comes into contact with and give them the opportunity to get to know her and her to really get to know them and if they're not the right one there's always the right one somewhere. In fact, there are a lot of right ones. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have to worry about scarcity or when it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Because we're part of it. We're helping her. We're putting her together with others. She just doesn't know it in this time yet. So you're all kind of secretly matchmaking her in the background? Sure, because we know that's what she wants. Yes. And we want to fulfill her wants, her desires. Mm -hmm. We want her to be happy in every respect. So she'll be able to meet a man? Oh yeah, easy. Who will rock her, not just make her feel comfortable? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Good. So you said that she's very good, very open to love, but in this, in this category, is there a little fear there? Well, yeah, because she's kind of been out of it for a while. Yes. It's understandable, but you know, she's a pretty open person. She she gives people a chance. Mm -hmm. So I don't worry about her judging people. And so I think that, you know, with our help and the help of the other angels and all the beings who are looking out for her, we can make it happen. She just needs to be open. How do you see her life changing after this? 
Well, she's really wanted to do more traveling in the world. Even if it's short trips, she'd like to do that. She'd ha like to have somebody to joke with. Yes. To share her family with and probably to share his family with her. Is he out there? Oh, yeah. Very good. What would good be a good way for her to know that it's him? Well, she'll be able to tell by his laughter, mm -hmm. and she'll read his kind eyes for sure. She'll just know he's the perfect mix of all that she desires. Yes. Good. Now, she has questions about our health. Can you do a body scan on her and let's see how her health is today? Looks good. She had a question about her elevated white blood cell count. What's that all about? Nothing to be concerned about. I think if she goes for that next blood test that she's going to go for mm -hmm. soon, she's going to find out that everything's fine. Okay. Now she told me that she's getting vibrations, different feelings in her body. What are these symptoms all about? Well, first of all, it was about letting you know that we're really connected and that we're really real. Mm -hmm. and, and you do that by giving sensations in the body? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the best way to do it, we feel. Because people can ignore it if we do it other ways. Thoughts sometimes, but physical, physical feelings like that, that that she's never experienced before, mm -hmm. it's just so different. She knows, she knows just on some level that it's something really unique and special mm -hmm. and the more we we touch different parts of her body her feet her legs like we're doing now mm -hmm. her shoulders wherever we choose touch her cheek she feels a sensation she does mm -hmm. <clears throat> so these sensations are these things that are happening just because of you or is there she feeling more of maybe the wave of this uh, new earth Oh, changes. A combination of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, is the body going to be changing during this new earth? Yeah, well, she hears, she reads that, you know, we're going to become in crystalline. Yes. And that is the case. We're allowing her to do an easy transition in that direction. Okay. She doesn't have a lot of symptoms of it, but yet we want her to know she's doing it. Mm -hmm. What are the symptoms of changing to a crystalline body? Well, some people have headaches, mm -hmm. they can't sleep, they feel nauseated, mm -hmm. just all kinds of, of things that make you feel not right in your body, but yes. that's not her experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to the doctor for those and getting medicated for that. Well, it's not a good idea, but... Mm -hmm. They should just follow their heart, and if if they want to get checked out, fine, but they should think twice before they allow any medical intervention. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because it's not for their good, and what's happening is a natural transition, and if one medicates for stuff like that, when it's really just transcending to the crystalline being, it's not going to help. It may even slow down the process. Oh. So we're actually hurting ourselves. Yeah. Okay, good. Now my question to you, why did you bring Barbara here to this session so far away from her home? What did you want to tell her? We just want her to be at peace, to know that she's doing what she came to do. This lifetime is a success, and even if this physical life were over tomorrow, that she would be complete, but as she continues on, she gets to experience more joy, give more love, receive more love, and get her work out there. Mm-hmm. Because the world needs it, doesn't it? It does. Mm-hmm. And there's magic in her work because of where it comes from, and others will pick that up. It's not just ordinary art, it's really unique and special. Mm -hmm. So when people have her artwork, displayed in their home. What does that do to their home? It energizes it. Mm -hmm. 
She uses special water when she paints. It's plasma water. It comes from the divine. It's like magic. And since she started adding it, she's become more prolific. And so many of her works are magnificent. Others resonate with it. It's just a matter of getting it in front of them. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Barbara today that perhaps I didn't ask that she would like to know about? We just want her to feel a sense of satisfaction of knowing that everybody's life is perfect, no matter what happens or doesn't happen. There's no judgment from us. We're just here to support. That's our role. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'd like for you now to do a scan of her body, align her chakras, seal her aura. And let me know how her body looks now. Looks great. Wonderful. Are we complete? We are. Thank you so much for your assistance. Wide awake now. Wide awake feeling wonderful. All of Welcome back. Thanks. Wow. That was great. I was really surprised by um, those lifetimes because oh I had no God. idea about those lifetimes. That were so nice. Yeah. I mean, they were so vivid. Even when you lost Netgar. Yeah, I just did what you taught me to do, which is it just whatever came, it was perfect. just go with it. It was perfect. Yeah. It was short and sweet, but man, you got a lot of information. I did. Yeah. How long do you feel you were on this journey? Well, maybe an hour and a half. It was actually less. It oh. was. It was less. It was an. It was less than an hour. Oh wow! But you got more. Mm -hmm. You packed so much. I was ready. Yeah. And your higher self came through brilliantly. How do you feel now about your artwork? It's special. Well, I know. I, I've always known that, but mm -hmm. you know, I so appreciate the the help mm -hmm. that's here. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel's going to go out there and start. Blowing his horn? Blowing his horn. <laughs> really, the bottom line is that we don't do this by ourselves. Right. We, we have to really, our, our, the only part that we have to put in there is asking. That's it. Once we ask, it takes off. Right. So there's nothing that we have to do. So you know now that you don't have to do anything. Right. It's just, it'll get out there, you know? So different from the way we've been programmed that, that that this world works. It's not what we've been taught. Right. Seek and you shall find. You know, ask and they'll get the word out. You know, all you have to do is just love what you do and tell everybody about it. You know, that's really all it is. That was great. So, do you want to keep this private? Or you want to share some of this stuff? What do you think? What, whatever you want to do is fine no, with me. It's up to you. It's up to you. Well, if it benefits others, I'm, okay. I'm cool with it. Okay. Right. Okay. So okay. here we are in the dark. In <laughs> <laughs> Las Vegas. And we're in Las Vegas. And we're in a really dark, dark apartment. It's an Airbnb. So I can't get any more light. So you'll have to just deal with the shadows. So how was the session for you? was really great I loved it just I love the flow of it all that you don't have to think that that it's not about thinking yeah it's just just being present and just whatever you envision just letting it out so how did you feel about these lives well I was really surprised because I didn't know anything about any of those lives and <laughs> they were you know kind of ordinary lives but they all had meanings so yeah it was cool yeah and uh, what about your higher self your higher self said a lot of great stuff I know I loved it, especially when it was talking about the new earth and yeah. and you know the, the transition that we're making and uh -huh. how that would be. You know that was like kind of a validation of 
of some of the stuff I thought. But yes. Yeah, it just makes it a little more more real. And and what we, what was interesting is about the the feelings of the body uh, during this transition. Right. That I asked about that because a lot of people come to me with symptoms like my ears are ringing, I have headaches, I feel all these weird feelings, and they run to the doctor and they're getting medicated. Right. And it seems like this is part of our bodies changing. Right, and uh, I like the way it was brought out that, you know, it's probably not the best idea to do that. Unless right. Unless your heart tells you that that's what you need. Yes. But really always to check in with that because some have symptoms, some don't, but, mm -hmm. you know, they, they could be real physical symptoms or not. And yeah. It's just kind of like following and trusting your heart. Mm -hmm. Just like I was told that I needed to change my diet. Right. That I had to really, really change my diet because I was going down the wrong path. And sugar, I was taken off of sugar. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> Too much pie for Christmas time. Yeah. So that was what, uh, it was really affecting my heart. And I felt, you know, I wasn't on the right path. And they told me fruits and veggies for a while until I can get stabilized. Right. So um, it, was, it was really, really a nice session. I loved Heidi. I mm -hmm. loved that life. I thought it was so good and about the school system and right how well, she was very very vocal right well you know women are powerhouses and even back then yes yeah. that's right and and I I felt the 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 gnomes and the fairies how mm -hmm. you used to talk to the gnomes and the fairies sure that was really cool it was now one thing that came out during this whole session was your artwork uh-huh and can you explain to people what actually you do because your artwork was really a major part of the session well, what I do is, um, before I begin my work, I always call in the beings that wish to help me, the divine, yes, the masters, the art masters from other times and space, those from other dimensions. Yes. I call in all who wish to participate that have good intentions. Mm -hmm. And so that really helps. And then, of course, I spray the canvas before I start with this plasma water, mm. which, you know, adds another dimension to um, the... the uh, divineness of what yes. comes through so that's great yeah. and what kind of artwork do you do what do, do you paint with certain types of paints or yeah currently I'm working in acrylics and um, I love the fact that uh, since I do use cups and not use paint brushes that you it's hard to be judgmental when you're pouring from a cup you know ah, like, so you just so, pour on the canvas Yeah, I just pour on the canvas and ah. so that's when the magic happens and that's why I'm especially delighted that the divine comes through because yes. It's like I just show up and I'm passionate about what I do and I love color. I've always loved color. And the rest is all about flow. That's great. Yeah. Is there a place that I could see your artwork? Do you have a place where you like show it or? Uh, not currently. I have done some shows locally where I live. Uh -huh. But uh, I have every intention when I get back of working with uh, a wonderful business manager person that is an art expert. Wonderful. There's so many choices on how to get your art out. I yeah. Wanna, I want to use the help from the other side, yeah. you know, but well, I also want to have... You've already help. been told that Gabriel's going to go out there and start talking about this. So. Right, I know. It's terrific to That's have great. a team like that. Yeah, oh, pff, divine, yeah, divine team. Right. So right now we are in Las Vegas, Nevada. And where did you travel from? I'm from Sacramento. Ooh, from California. So yeah. it wasn't that far, no. not compared to... What well, could be, right? But uh, I travel all over the place. I just got back from Maui. In fact, I arrived here uh, just yesterday, so this is my first night here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want a session with me, you can go to my website albawyman.com. Uh, go to my out of town page and subscribe to my newsletter, and that tells you where I'm traveling to next. And that's how you get an appointment with me now. Just click on those links very quickly because the appointments get booked really fast and um, then I'll hope to see you sometime soon so I hope you enjoyed this this video I I like this session I thought it was really good and I hope you enjoyed it too I hope to get to meet you someday though have a nice one thank you very much for watching bye can I get that hug that I always get mm.